Welcome. In this video, we'll show you how to make a house track in FL Studio using only included tools and workflows. You'll learn what makes a house beat tick, how swing works, and how to progress from a loop to music. There will of course be a download link to the project made for this tutorial in the video information, so feel free to explore for yourself what we did here. To save time, I have curated a bunch of samples and presets for this track, just so you don't have to watch me digging through sample folders and tweaking synthesizers. This isn't a sound design tutorial. So I'll drag the samples into the channel rack one by one and then start adding steps. One of the most defining aspects of house music is the kick drum. It plays on every quarter note or every beat. So I'll right click the channel button and choose fill each four steps. Let's make the channel rack a bit bigger so we have more room to work with. I'll choose fill each eight steps for the snare and then use the rotate function in the menu to shift the steps left or right. You can do this from your keyboard by using Ctrl, Shift and left and right arrow. Same deal for the hi-hat. And the ghost snare I'll paint in myself. Let's listen to what we have. Cool. I'll go into each channel's channel settings next and tweak some of the parameters. As we noted in our Hip Hop and Trap Tools video, Pogo in the pre-computed effects section is a very powerful tool for adding massive transient punch to kicks for example. Let's add some swing now. Swing lengthens the odd numbered steps and shortens the even numbered steps every second step. That much should do it. Nice. Okay. We've been listening to this in pattern mode. If we want to make a song out of this though, we should probably switch FL Studio to song mode. Click here or press L on your keyboard to switch modes. We can paint the pattern into the playlist by left clicking empty space. When you press play in song mode, you can see the playhead moving in the playlist. I'll right click the first playlist track and name it drums. Then I'll select all my channels, color them the same from the channel rack menu up here, and link them to the mixer. For that, I'll select a mixer track and right click, go to channel routing, and select route selected channels starting from this track. You can also press Ctrl, Shift and L to achieve this without opening the menu. 130 BPM is a little fast though, isn't it? I'll set the BPM to 124 in the tempo selector now, so it's closer to most house music. Most house music is between 115 and 135 BPM, but this feels a little fast, so I will slow it down. 124 feels right for this track. Right click it, type in value 124. This could do with some high end sound, so let's add a loop. I'll press F8, type slice X, and drag it onto an empty playlist track. This has made an instrument track. Now the channel rack, playlist, and mixer track are automatically named and linked together. Next, I'll grab a loop from the browser and drop it into slice X. There is no shame in augmenting your work with pre made loops, most pros use them. Just chop and edit them to suit your style or leave them as is, your call. Nice. Enough drum work for now. Let's get a bass going. I'll add flex from the plugin picker and make another instrument track. Then I'll select all down here and type house in the search bar. House classic. Sounds like what I want. Let's click a little pattern into FL Studio. Double click the pattern to open the piano roll. 
house bass is generally repeating the root note of the chord progression of the song in a syncopated rhythm. Which is why I will do exactly that here. It sounds nice, but it could be nicer. So what I'll do now is clone the bass track by right clicking its playlist track header and selecting clone. I only want the notes, so I will deselect everything but pattern. And now I'll replace the second Flex Channel FL Studio has made for me with one of my curated citrus sounds for this project. There we are, that's much fuller. Now that we have kick and bass in the project, in house music production it's a good idea to sidechain the kick to the bass. To drop the level of the bass when the kick plays. This makes the beat hit harder as it can cut through the mix. Sidechaining is where one track is used to affect a parameter on a different one. Usually it's volume. I do this in a special way, where I will have a sidechain bus on the first mixer track, which sends to all tracks that are supposed to receive sidechain inputs. So I'll select an unused mixer track and move it to the left with Alt and Arrow left. I'll right click and select my sidechain trigger preset from the file menu. If you want to know what this is and why I'm doing it this way, please check out the compression video in our Mixing Basics series where we go into detail about this process. Now I'll unroute it from the master by clicking the routing arrow and sidechain it to the bass tracks by shift clicking their routing arrows. And then I'll send the kick into the track so it arrives at the bass tracks after being processed. And there we go, clean sidechain pumping. Sidechain sounds are being ducked each time the trigger sound plays. This gives more space for the kick. Now let's duplicate this entire thing and create a gradient of musical energy. Select it all by holding Ctrl and clicking and dragging the mouse. Then press Ctrl B. I want the first part to have less energy and the second part to step it up a notch. So for now, let's delete the hat loop from the first eight bars, like so, and also get rid of the hi hats in the drum pattern. To do that, Select the first four patterns here. Then go into the playlist edit menu and choose make unique. This will make all selected clips unique and so changes to them will no longer affect other instances. Then click them so they open up in the channel rack, select everything that is not the kick and press Ctrl and X to cut the steps out. When I'm done, these first patterns on the drum track are going to be kick drum only. Now let's create an impact on the first beat of the second half. For that I'll make some space here and add another patch I've prepared for this project. This will be a sub bass drop that shakes things up a little. Paint in an A, use a slide note to pull it down an octave. Perfect. After that let's really step up the energy by adding a lead sound from 3OSC. I'll add notes that are similar to the bass notes but also play around with slides. They add an organic special source to any track since most wind and string instruments can bend or slide notes, your shortcut to emotion. complete the picture, let's add a reverb to the sound and automate it up in key sections. I'll get a fruity reverb too and set it to all wet. Then right click its dry wet control in the mixer 
and select Create Automation Clip. Since we added 3OSC as an instrument track, the automation shows up as a new track of the same color below the instrument track. Right click to add points to an automation clip. You can also double click it and use the automation editor, which lets you select multiple points and move them. The delete key on your keyboard will delete selected points. Now it's coming together. For chords, I'll grab another sound I've made for this project and add it as an instrument track. Double click the pattern to open up the piano roll. I'll choose Stamp up here and Minor to give myself an A minor chord. Then I'll shift click and drag that chord to make a copy and press Ctrl and arrow up to make it an octave higher. And again. Now this chord covers three octaves. Using techniques we've previously discussed, I'll now add reverb and delay automation, clone the track and add brass layers. That's what I'm talking about. After that, we still have some things to do. Grab a 909 snare from the FL Studio Packs folder. Place the pattern here. Fill all the steps. If you press K on the keyboard, you can open the graph editor to quickly edit velocity and fine pitch without looking at the piano roll window at all. Time for some 909 hats as well. Grab them and add them in the same manner we used for the previously curated hi-hats. Then I'll make an EDM fill snare quickly. Grab a snare with lots of mid-range like this one from FPC. Add an EQ to boost the mids. Reverb, Sound Goodizer, and then automate the volume after Sound Goodizer with a fruity scent. There you go. Next, I'll get another 3 OSC and set all 3 oscillators to white noise. Choose a bandpass filter, then I'll automate the filter frequency here, and paint a long note into the pattern. White noise sounds with automated filters are often called downlifters. When used at a low volume, they can contribute massively to the progression of energy in the track. Noise downlifter done. Let's call this one noise down and clone it. Make the automation go the other way and call it noise up. Perfect, we've got some motion that's always going now. Now this step is optional, but you may also want to add a 909 crash. Of course you do. So I'll grab it from the packs folder, cut it to one beat length, and use the audio clip menu here to automate its volume up and back down quickly. Then I'll add a delay three to that. The only thing that's missing now is vocals. For vocals, I'll grab some Lori Web Vox from the Pax folder. Those will fit into this project neatly. Dance. Ah. I'll drench them in reverb and compression and tuck them into the mix. there we have it. Now you're at a point where you have a very solid idea that can be fleshed out into a full track with little effort if you use all the techniques shown in this video. 
We hope this video helps you get started making house music in FL Studio. There should be nothing stopping you now. And if you already know how to make house music, we hope this video showed at least some techniques and workflows you were unfamiliar with. Please check out the video information for additional helpful pages in the manual and the demo project used in this video. Happy music making!